but we started planting our hummingbird garden and we're also going to put up some hummingbird feeders and there's a few things that you want to look for when buying a hummingbird feeder if you're going to put them up and one of the most important things to look for is ease of cleaning if you're going to hang a hummingbird feeder for those hummingbirds, you're going to have to clean it. If you're not going to clean it, then you shouldn't put one up. And so first off, when you're looking for one, you're out shopping for a hummingbird feeder, um, make sure it's easy to disassemble because you're going to have to do that when you clean it. Now this one disassembles really well, but there's a couple things on here that might not be so easy to clean. And one is it's got a really narrow opening here, and then there's all of this part down in here that might be a little bit hard to clean. So that might not be one of our best options. Now this hummingbird feeder, it's got a plastic feeder here and if you'll notice it's got a little wider mouth here and so this one's going to be easier to clean the inside of and also it's fairly easy to clean in this area. Now these flowers here will actually come off so we could clean those out real well too. So this would be a pretty good hummingbird feeder to get. It's, it's a little bit large though. Now we've got one over here that has another thing that you should be looking for and that is look for hummingbird feeder that has bee guards. Now you can read on the box and see if they have bee guards but what they're going to look like is a, some kind of contraption like this where there's a cage over the hole or else there's an extended opening and so it's further than the bee can reach in but the hummingbird is still able to reach in and lap up the nectar in that. So make sure that your hummingbird feeder is easy to clean and it has bee guards. Those are two good things to look for. Now when I talk about having a hummingbird feeder that is easy to clean. Um, Another option is that if you get one that's glass and it's dishwasher safe, you can throw that in the dishwasher and clean it very easily that way and then just scrub the bottom part out. But if you don't have one that's glass, if you have one that's plastic or it's not dishwasher safe, you can take it down when you're changing the solution and clean it with a solution of one tablespoon of white vinegar to one cup of water. And work that around in there, that'll help dissolve the, the sugar that's in there and clean that out. Now also to sterilize your cleaner about once a month you're going to want to make a 10 percent Clorox solution and after you've washed that up soak that bird feeder in there for about an hour and then bring it out rinse it off and let that dry out completely before refilling it. Well once you've selected a hummingbird feeder then you kind of want to know what to feed hummingbirds. Well the best thing to feed hummingbirds is a solution of one part granulated sugar to four parts water. That closely resembles the nectar that the hummingbirds are eating from the flowers and so that's a good solution to make. You don't want to make it any more concentrated than that because that can harm the hummingbirds. Now you want to use granulated sugar and not something like honey because honey one will attract bees and two Honey can attract a fungus that is actually very harmful to hummingbirds. So always remember to use sugar and not honey and also don't use an artificial sweetener because what happens with an artificial sweetener is a hummingbird is drinking all this water but they're not getting any calories. So they can actually kind of starve to death. Now when you're making your hummingbird solution, boil the water first and then remove it from the heat and add the sugar and stir that in and it'll dissolve. Now what happens when you're boiling the water that helps sterilize that solution and it will help keep that from growing fungus or bacteria or algae. It will keep it fresher longer. Now fill your hummingbird feeder with that solution and if it's not getting emptied in between times don't completely fill your feeder because optimally you want to fill your feeder and all that solution will be eaten by the hummingbirds and then you'll fill it with new after you've cleaned it. So you always want to be sure if you've got any solution left in your hummingbird feeder when you change it to discard that extra solution, clean it out, and then fill it with new solution. Now another thing that hummingbirds are attracted to is the color red and anymore most hummingbird feeders have a lot of red on them to attract the hummingbirds and you don't want to add any red food coloring to that solution because that 
as well is harmful to the hummingbirds. So the solution here is actually going to be clear and the red on the hummingbird feeder will attract them. Now you may have problems with insects also liking to come to the feeders because of the sugar solution. Well if they're tiny things like fruit flies and gnats, those are actually beneficial to hummingbirds. That's how they get their protein and so they eat those insects when they're hovering around. Now if you have bees and wasps, again if you get a wasp guard that will help and also a very fine spray of water ever so often over the area will help keep them away and the hummingbirds actually like that. Now I'm not talking about spraying them down with the hose but if you have a mister attachment to your hose you can just do a light spray of water that will chase the bees away and let the hummingbirds come to the feeder. Now another insect that is a lot of times a problem with hummingbird feeders are the ants. Now there are a few things that you can do to kind of trick ants and first off if you hang your hummingbird feeder either by a wire or from a, a chain works really well coat that wire with something like Vaseline or salad oil. Ants don't like things that are sticky or slippery and so that'll kind of keep them off of there for a while. Another good trick is that ants actually follow paths to get to a spot. So if you have a place where you're hanging your hummingbird feeder, put a series of about three hooks and every time you change the solution, move that hummingbird feeder around to a different hook in the same area but not in the exact same spot and that will kind of throw those ants off the trail to that sugar water. Well finally, once you've got your hummingbird feeder and you've got it filled with solution and you want to hang a hummingbird feeder, one good idea is to put a feeder around your hummingbird garden. If you have a hummingbird garden, that's a good idea. Hang one in there and then also hang one close to a window if you want to because you're going to want to see those hummingbirds and you need to have one in the garden but then another visible one further away and those hummingbirds will be attracted and they'll come to your window. Now you want them in a sunny area but the actual hummingbird feeder you're going to want to try to hang that like under an eave or in a little shady patch so that your solution is not in direct sun. Now I've talked a lot about um, changing the feed and everything like that and you may wonder well how often do I need to do that? Well here while it's still a little bit cooler you need to do that at least once a week. Now once it gets warm like warmer than 80 degrees you're going to want to change and clean that feeder every two to three days and if you ever notice that the solution in your feeder is cloudy you've waited too long so you're going to have to keep with it. It's kind of like having a pet. You're going to have to change the water really often. But if you hang these out, you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it, as long as you take the responsibility to keep them clean. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.